Today, let's look at Psalm 61. Psalm 61. The cry of desperation and longing for God's presence. Note that in the midst of desperation, the only answer for any situation is the presence of God. Every problem in life ultimately is, at root, a problem of God, of a relationship with God. Here we go. Psalm 61. Hear my cry, O God. Listen to my prayer. From the ends of the earth I call to you when my heart is faint. What a beautiful expression of desperation. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. For you have been my refuge, a strong tower against the enemy. I look back at my life and you have been my shelter. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. The rock is another name for Jehovah God. The rock is the rock from which living waters flow. The rock is the rock in which, as we meditated on yesterday, the caves, the protective caves of God are. But those protective caves and the living water that flowed all pointed to the presence of God. So verse 4 says, Let me dwell in your tent forever. Let me take refuge under the shelter of your wings. For you, O God, have heard my vows. You have given me the heritage of those who fear your name. Here we swing, as the Psalms often do, into the positive aspect, positive perspective of God's presence. And then he says, verse 6, Prolong the life of the king. May his ears endure to all generations. May he be enthroned forever before God. Appoint steadfast love and faithfulness to watch over him. So will I ever sing praises to your name as I perform my vows day after day. Now, these last few verses, are they about David or the coming Davidic king, the Messiah? Well, they are about David. When he speaks about prolong the life of the king, he is speaking about himself in third person. Sure, in a way he is. You're meant to see that. And he is asking for God to prolong his life, that he may fulfill his vows to God, that he may glorify him in the way that he rules. But he points beyond himself. Yes, because God has promised to David that he will guard his throne, and not that David will live forever, but that his descendants will rule forever. He's asking for the fulfillment of that promise, the keeping of the covenant. And verse 7, may he, the king, be enthroned forever before God. Appoint steadfast love and faithfulness to watch over him. Oh, bless the Messiah. Bless the coming king. And we join in the praises and say, bless the king who has come. Who has come. His reign truly is forever and ever. And all the nations and all the peoples, all the tribes, tongues, and nations will sing his praise. And to some extent, because the gospel has gone all over the world, even now, they are worshiping him. So we bring everything captive, every thought even captive, to King Jesus. This is our calling. This is your calling. And this is my calling because Jesus still reigns. This world may look like it's going to hell in a bread basket, but understand, a good portion of it is going to heaven. Because Jesus is ruling over all the, all the earth, and even the wrath of man will praise him. It will serve his purposes, like the cross served the purposes of his salvation for all of humanity, and so served his glory. So, have no doubt that your king is still on his throne. What is he doing on his throne? He is keeping us safe, seated with him. What else is he doing on the throne? He is praying for you and for me. Romans chapter 8, we meditated on it last week. Our king still rules. God has answered David's prayer in the affirmative. Our 
Davidic king, fulfilling all the prophetic expectation, is even now ruling. And you and I, we are evidences of that awesome fact. So let's come bow before him, rededicate our lives to him, and joyfully walk before him, ever singing praises to his name. Let's pray. Let me dwell in your tent forever. Let me take refuge under the shelter of your wing. O God, through King Jesus, because he still reigns, because his protection still cover us, you answer this prayer. Lord, we feel very weak at times. Especially, Lord, these fragile bodies are so easily broken. But you pour out your mercy on us, and you have been so kind. You are still our refuge, and you will be our refuge forever. You reign now, and you will reign forever. We take refuge now under the shelter of your wings, and we will dwell in your heavenly tent forever. We keep that in mind as we sing your praises. It is our joy to sing your praises, to join in worship, while others will have to bow down before you, acknowledge you as Lord, and glorify you even in your wrath. We glorify you in your mercy. You are so good, and you reign as king forever and ever. It is our joy to have it so, our generous servant king. In his name, Jesus' matchless, precious name we pray, amen.